analysis for short fiber composites. Many a times composites are fabricated with short fibers for cost reason. Long fibers composites tend to be very expensive and therefore they can only be used for very specialized application like aircrafts or very expensive cars but in many cases we need composite material which are also cost effective. So to solve this problem composites are fabricated with short fibers because using short fibers you can use any of the manufacturing methods like uh, injection molding and therefore you can produce products at a cheaper price. Now there is a difference between short fiber composites and long fiber composites as far as the stress analysis and the strength are concerned. So here in this video we will look at how we can treat short fiber composites in terms of their strength. These pictures show chopped glass fiber. On the left side you see pieces of glass fiber and on the right side on the, the right picture shows glass fiber which has been converted into mat. Glass fiber, short glass fiber reinforced composites have been used as fiberglass and this picture shows the use of fiberglass in a in an old industrial building. So here you can see that the plastic has the plastic part has weathered out so you can see the glass fiber inside. This can happen to polymer based composites because of the weathering effect. Good fiber matrix bonding is essential for composites especially for short fiber ones. So we have seen that for long fibers as well fiber matrix bonding is important. However for short fibers it is extremely important. Therefore the ratio of fiber surface area A to fiber volume V should be large. So if this ratio is large that means the surface area is very high in comparison to its volume. So that will give us very good adhesion because for adhesion we need good surface area, a large surface area. So this is the one of the condition for short fiber composites. Here we have a schematic of short fiber composite. You can see these are the fibers which are not completely long. These are short fibers. Now in this schematic picture I have shown these fibers as fully aligned but this is not always the case. You may have a short fiber composite where the fibers are at random. So they are in all directions. But during manufacturing it is possible to align the short fibers in one direction. For example during the, the molding process you can design the mold in such a way that the flow of the polymer happens in one direction and during the flow the fibers can get aligned. If we look at a single short fiber then it could look like this. So here this is the length of the fiber and 2R is the diameter. So R is the radius of this fiber. Let us assume that the fiber is cylindrical in shape. Assuming cylindrical shape of the fibers we can say the area, the exposed area of the fiber of one individual fiber is 2 pi r square. Pi r square is the surface area of one side so there are two surfaces one on this side and another on this side so we say 2 pi r square and 2 pi r l. So 2 pi r is the circumference of this cylinder and we multiply by length l so it gives the surface area of this curved surface of this cylinder. So this will be the area total area of this cylindrical short fiber. The volume of this short fiber will be given by pi r square multiplied by l. So this is the volume. So therefore area to volume ratio will be given by this equation. So we divide this by pi r square l. So this gives us 2 over l plus 2 over r. Now if we define aspect ratio A of a fiber as l over 2 r. So this is the aspect ratio de definition. We can rewrite the equation 4.30 in terms of aspect ratio. If you do a small calculation you will find that this expression can be converted into this one. In this case you will need these equations for example L is equal to 2AR which comes from the here and V equal to 2 pi 
R Q A. Therefore, R is equal to V over 2 pi A power 1 over 3. So, if we substitute these into this equation for L and for R, then we can find this equation. So, this is the ratio of A over V. Now, from this equation from 4.31, we can find for optimum adhesion A over V should be high which means aspect ratio should be either very small or too large. So this is one condition. For example in this equation if you see if the aspect ratio is very small then this term will be very large. So therefore A over V will be large or if the aspect ratio is very large then this term will be very large and this will be small. So again we are going to get A over V as large. So in order to have A over V as large for good addition between the fiber and the matrix, we should have aspect ratio either very small or too large. So too large aspect ratio means, for example, looking at this equation, L over 2R. For A to be large, we need L to be large. So length of the fiber should be large. Then we can get large aspect ratio. For a small aspect ratio, very small aspect ratio, it is like a flakes. So these are flat surfaces and they will have smaller aspect ratio, very small aspect ratio and they will also give A over V as large. So in order to get very good short fiber composites, we should have either fibers which have got very high aspect ratio or we could have flakes. Uh, like graphene flakes or many minerals like talc also comes in in flat flakes forms. So those kind of fillers can be added for short fiber composites. In short fiber composites, the fibers exert force on the matrix to restrain its deformation. So let's look at this model. So here we have got the short fiber composite with one single short fiber here. This represents the fiber and this is the matrix and we have drawn some grid lines here just to look at the deformation pattern. So this is before applying stress. Now when we apply the stress then we are going to extend this matrix slightly because of the elastic deformation. This extension will exert some stress on the fiber and we can look at the deformation pattern. So these deformation pattern will look something like this. So you can see that at the two ends of the fiber you have got high stress application and this stress is applied on the surface of the fiber therefore it is the shear stress between the fiber and the matrix. So the shear stress is applied at the two ends between the fiber and the matrix and this shear stress eventually leads to high bulk stress in the matrix. So this is the process of load transfer. So when we apply the load or the force on the on short fiber composites, the load is eventually transferred to the fibers. That is how the fibers will take the load. However, during this transmission, there is a shearing action. There is a shear stress between the fiber and the matrix. So this shear strength of this interface also plays an important role. So somewhere in the middle, if the short fiber is has sufficient length, somewhere in the middle we will experience sigma f max. Sigma f means stress in the fiber and maximum. So maximum stress we will experience somewhere in the middle. So it starts from the zero stress and as we go in the stress increases and somewhere in the middle we will achieve highest stress load transfer takes place by the shearing shear strength between the fiber and the matrix. So the restraint provided by the fiber against matrix deformation results in the rise in the stress in the fiber itself. The stress increases from zero at the end of the fiber to a maximum value at some distance from both the ends. So as we said just now here the stress on the fiber is zero and it increases and achieves a higher value, a maximum value. Okay, So stress is zero here in the fiber but we have shear stress between the matrix and the fiber at the two ends. 
sigma f max is the maximum stress in the fiber which is achieved some distance from the two ends. Now let us look at the one single short fiber and when we apply the stress that means we have applied the stress in the composite and how the stresses develop. So this is L is the length of the fiber this short fiber and D is the diameter of this fiber. If we look at the stress evolution what we will find is that in the beginning or at the two ends it starts with shear stress shear stress between the fiber and the matrix so shear stress is highest at the end and as we go in inward the shear stress decreases and in the beginning the stress in the fiber is zero and this stress increases that means the stress the tensile stress in the in the fiber itself so this stress will increase slowly and it achieves a maximum value and at this value the shear stress goes to zero. So this is the load transmission or load, load transfer zone. So in this zone the shear stress starts with high value goes to a zero whereas the tensile stress starts with zero goes to a higher value and then this value continues throughout as constant. Same process happens at the other end of the short fiber. In the middle we have got the maximum stress that has been achieved by the short fiber depending upon how much stress we have applied on the composite. Now here for nomenclature we will call L as the length of this short fiber and LT is the load transfer length the LT. So on this side we have got LT by 2 and on this side also LT by 2. So total length LT represents the load transfer length of this fiber. So you imagine if the short fiber was of very very small length even lower than LT in that case the load transfer cannot be sufficient. So that means the fiber will not achieve the highest stress it will achieve a lower stress because the total length of the fiber itself is lower than the load transfer length LT. Now this is the actual case but this has been idealized as this where we assume that the tensile stress in the short fiber starts from zero and it goes in a linear fashion to a higher value sigma f max and the shear stress is constant throughout and it goes to zero. Just for our analysis we will assume this kind of condition same condition exists on this side as well length is still l and lt is the load transfer length load transfer occurs at the two ends of the fiber before the fiber experiences maximum stress so as i said before the load transfer starts from zero here and continues to grow the stress grows and it attains a maximum value and then continues at the maximum value so only this length of the short fiber is actually experiencing the maximum load. The length of the fiber required for the load transfer is LT. So again LT is the load transfer length of the fiber. If the length of the fiber is lower than LT then maximum load cannot be transferred to the fiber. So here I will make a, an analogy between the, the short fiber composite and um, here in this model. So I've got this uh, cartridge, ink cartridge, which I model as a short fiber and you can consider my hand as the matrix. So the matrix is holding the fiber. So now I would like to make the analogy for the load transfer. So the matrix is holding the fiber through the addition between the matrix and the fiber surfaces. So this is this is the interface here so if i hold like this and if i pull this fiber because there is a stress in the composite i pull the fiber because there is a stress stress is being applied in the composite so this stress will translate at the interface so depending upon the interfacial strength between the matrix and the short fiber this stress from the matrix is transferred to the short fiber through the shear stress and the shear stress is between the matrix and the fiber so at the interface so when i apply some shear stress so this 
shear stress eventually leads to the tensile stress in the fiber so from both sides if i apply shear stress that means i pull apart then i am applying shear stress and this shear stress is transferred here as tensile stress so this is what happens in the short fiber composites so basically the stress in the matrix is transferred to the fiber through shear stress here so depending upon the shear strength of this interface between the matrix and the fiber the the load transfer length will be decided so for example if the shear strength is very high that means only this much holding can transfer all the loads to the fiber but if the shear strength is low then you need much larger surface before you can transfer the load to the fiber so that's why depending upon the shear strength of the interface the critical length of the short fiber is decided or the load transfer length of the fiber is decided so if the shear strength is very high then you can manage with smaller lt so this is lt by 2 but so if the shear strength between the matrix and the fiber is weaker then you need larger surface area and therefore you can you will have to hold much larger length so that means the critical length of this fiber will be large or load transfer length of this fiber will be large so therefore it is very important to optimize the strength between the the shear strength between the matrix and the fiber so this was the analogy for the load transfer in short fiber composites the load transfer that happens from the matrix to the fiber and in fact if you have conducted tensile tests same thing happens when we conduct the tensile test so in tensile test we have got a specimen which is here i'm putting as vertical and the specimen is held so i will show it in horizontal case the specimen is held by the clamps at two ends so these two clamps actually give the stress in the form of shear stress between the clamp surface and your specimen surface and that shear stress is transferred to the specimen in terms of tensile stress tensile load so in tensile test we do exactly the same thing we transfer the load from the clamp to the specimen using the shear stress between the clamp surface and the specimen surface forces acting on the fiber may be written as now we will do the force balance on the fiber so just now we have gone through this the forces are the shear stress at the two ends and the stress inside the fiber force due to the shear at the matrix fiber interface will be given as this one so tau y is the shear stress and we assume it is constant so shear stress multiplied by the area so lt over 2 multiplied by pi d so pi d is the circumference of this cylindrical fiber multiplied by lt over 2 which is the length it gives the surface area multiplied by the shear stress so this gives us the force the shearing force force supported by the fiber so this force is being supported by the fiber so fiber is resisting this force which is given by sigma f sigma f is the fiber stress in the fiber multiplied by the cross-sectional area so pi d square over 4 so these are the two forces which are in balance equating the previous two equations so if we equate these two equations we get this equation so lt we get as sigma f max d over 2 tau y where tau y is the shear strength of the inter fiber matrix interface so we will assume that this is the shear strength of the fiber matrix interface so this is the way we can find out the load transfer length of the fiber now the highest value of sigma f max will be equal to the tensile strength of the fiber sigma fu so the maximum strength maximum stress that the fiber can achieve is the fracture strength so so sigma fu is the ultimate fracture strength of the fiber or tensile strength of the fiber we can replace this by this to achieve the maximum value the fiber length corresponding to the above condition is known as critical fiber length lc which is given as this one when the fiber is going to fracture that is the maximum stress that the fiber can take 
then in that case this length will be known as critical fiber length LC. So this gives us a formula to find out what is the critical fiber length because if we know the fracture strength or tensile strength of the fiber and if D and tau y are known then we can find out the critical fiber length of the short fiber. So if the short fibers are smaller than the critical length in that case we are not going to achieve the maximum strengthening in the composite. In order to have this one small we need to have this one large very high shear strength between the fiber and the matrix. Now let us look at the condition when at the critical fiber length. So at the critical fiber length the stress in the fiber actually starts from 0 at the end and it achieves the maximum value sigma fu at the center of this fiber the longitudinal center and then again it goes to 0. If we consider a small element here dx then the change in the force will be given by df. Now we assume that x is 0 at the center of the fiber the longitudinal center of the fiber and x increases as we go towards the end of the fiber. Now why must the fiber length of for short fiber composites be kept greater than the critical length? Just now we have seen that using the force analysis the critical length is the length of the short fiber necessary for good strengthening of the short fiber composite. However our next analysis will show that the fiber length actually should be greater than the critical length in order to have a good short fiber composites a strong short fiber composite. For a small incremental length dx of the fiber there is an incremental increase in the stress in the fiber which is shown here dx is the smallest incremental length of the fiber and df is the increase in the force in this element and we consider this as length is equal to the critical length of the fiber so l is equal to lc that means the maximum stress is achieved at the center of this fiber so a change in the stress in the fiber d sigma f over a length of dx so therefore the force in this small element the stress generated in the fiber in this small element will be given by this so this is the force multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the fiber. So that is the small force increase in this element. And within this element there will be shear stress increase which will be given by this one. So it is given in the minus because the forces are in the opposite direction. The shear stress is pulling the fiber this way whereas the stress in the fiber is pulling this way. So here tau y pi d multiplied by dx. dx is the length of this element. Pi d is the circumference and dx is the length of this element. So this gives a force balance within this small element. Now simplifying this equation we can obtain d over 4 integral limits 0 to sigma f d sigma f is equal to my minus integral and this limit is half l to x tau y dx where dx is varying from half l which is here to 0 to x equal to 0 for example or x equal to any value here and the stress if you look at the stress is varying from 0 at this point to a maximum value of the stress or any value along this this line so depending upon x we can choose and we can find out the stress at any point. So this integration of equation 4.37 gives us sigma f that is stress in the fiber is equal to 4 tau y within bracket half l minus x over d. So this is the general equation we will use for stress in the fiber at various points on the fiber. So by changing the value of x we can find out stress in the fiber. x is the distance from the longitudinal center of the fiber where we can achieve maximum fiber strength. So as I said x is 0 here and it changes it goes to L over 2 at this point. So now if we substitute x as 0 in this case then we will achieve this maximum value which is sigma f is equal to 2 tau y L over d and if we substitute x as l over 2 which is at this point then this becomes 0 so stress is 0. So we can prove that this equation is valid stress in the fiber changes from 0 at this point to maximum with maximum value is given by sigma f is equal to 2 tau y l over d. 
Now the fiber length less than LT. So if the fiber length of the fiber is less than the load transfer length LT we had talked about before. So let us see that condition. So here is a schematic of the graph. So stress and this is the distance from the center of the fiber. So O is the center of the fiber and towards the end. So this is a short fiber and the length of the fiber is lower than LT. So L is less than LT. Now in this case, for this case the maximum stress will occur at the center of the fiber when x is equal to 0. Therefore from equation 4.38 we can write this one. So just by substituting x is equal to 0 in the previous equation we can find out sigma f is equal to 2 tau y L over D. Now the average stress can be calculated by dividing the area under the stress fiber length curve by the length of the fiber. So the length of the fiber is L here. So this area in these two triangles will be given by this term half L multiplied by 2 tau y L over D. So 2 tau y L over D is the this point. This is the stress. So e area of each triangle will be half of this multiplied by this one plus half of this multiplied by this one. So therefore the total will be given at this one divided by L. So this is the average stress total area in this in these two triangles divided by the total length L will be given as the average stress. So average stress is the stress in the composite. It is given by tau y L over D. So therefore the composite stress can be given by this one. So this is the average stress average stress in the fiber multiplied by the volume fraction of the fiber plus sigma m dash which is the stress in the matrix at the point of fracture strain of the fiber multiplied by this is the volume fraction of the matrix 1 minus Vf. So this is the equation for the stress in the composite. Now the second case we will deal with is the fiber length equal to LT. So in this case the peak stress is the maximum fiber stress with complete load transfer. Hence we can write at x equal to 0 at this point we get the maximum stress which is given by this equation. So sigma f is equal to 2 tau y LT over T. So length we take as LT and this stress will be the maximum stress that the fiber can achieve under this situation. So that means if L is equal to LT load transfer length then we are achieving the maximum stress. So the average fiber stress will be given by the area in these two triangles here divided by LT which is given as tau y LT over T. So this is the average stress. Therefore the composite stress, the stress in the composite will be given by the average stress in the composite multiplied by the volume fraction of the fiber plus sigma m dash multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix. So this is the equation we can find out for composite stress. The composite ultimate tensile strength for this case is also simplified as this equation. So, so if we take this from here, so this part tau y LT over D will be equal to sigma F max divided by 2. And if we replace sigma F max as the ultimate tensile strength of the fiber or fracture strength of the fiber, then in that case we can write sigma FF which is the fracture strength of the fiber divided by 2 multiplied by the volume fraction of the fiber plus the matrix part. So the volume fraction of the matrix multiplied by sigma y m which is the yield strength of the matrix. So this is a simplification to find out the composite ultimate tensile strength using these equations. So now we will deal with the case C which is the fiber length greater than LT. So in this case length of the fiber is greater than 
the load transfer length. Schematically, it is shown here. So here you can see L is the length of the fiber, which is greater than LT. The load transfer happens from the end of the fiber until certain distance. And this distance will be LT over 2. And beyond this point, the stress remains constant. So stress starts from 0 and continues to increase until a maximum value and then remains same. The maximum stress will be again given by this equation which we have seen before. That is the maximum stress the fiber can achieve. So for the case 1 is the this, this length of the fiber from end which is L over 2 until L t over 2. So for the case of L over 2 greater than x greater than half L minus L t. So which is this distance here this length of the fiber we can give by sigma f the stress in the fiber by this equation which is same as equation 4.38 we have considered before. So here in this case x varies from L by 2. So when we substitute L by 2 stress is 0 and goes to, to the maximum value of x which is L minus LT divided by 2 which is here. So these are the two limits. So L, o, L by 2 at x equal to L by 2 sigma f is 0 at x equal to half L minus LT sigma f is the maximum value which is 2 tau y LT over D. Now for the case from this point to this point which is half L minus LT greater than x greater than 0. So from this point until x is 0 here we see that the stress remains constant and it is the maximum stress sigma f max. There is no change in the stress and the maximum value is given as by this equation sigma f is equal to 2 tau y lt divided by t. So these are the two equations for the stress from here to here and then from here to here. So hence the average fiber stress will be obtained as so here we have got the area under the stress curve divided by the total length. So if we substitute the two equations we have just now uh, obtained we can find that average stress in the fiber will be given by this one sigma f max multiplied by 1 minus lt over 2l. Hence the composite stress may be given as so this is the average stress so average stress multiplied by the volume fraction of the fiber plus the matrix the stress in the matrix for the strain equivalent to the fracture strain of the fiber multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix. So this equation can be used to find out the composite stress for the case when the length of the fiber is more than LT. Now equation 4.50 shows that for fiber stress to be close to the maximum fiber stress, L should be much larger than LT. So in order to increase the stress, the overall composite stress, if L is much larger than LT, then we can get this term as very small and therefore we can get higher value of sigma c. Therefore this analysis tells us that the critical length of the fiber is not enough in order to have a very high strength of short fiber composites. If we want to have high strength which is given by this equation in order to have high strength in short fiber composite the length of the fiber should be much larger than the load transfer length of the fiber. Now I would like to summarize. Short fiber polymer composites tend to be weaker than the continuous long fiber counterparts. However, short fiber composites are preferred in many applications because they can be made cost effectively by any traditional plastics manufacturing method. For a good bonding between the fiber and the matrix and for high strength of the composite, the surface area to volume ratio of the fiber should be large, which means long fibers with a smaller radius or flat flakes are ideal fillers for short fiber composites. For a given fiber matrix interfacial shear strength and the fiber tensile strength, there is a fixed critical length of the fiber. 
The length of the short fiber must be greater than the fiber critical length in order to achieve complete load transfer and high strength in the composite. Higher the fiber matrix shear strength, smaller is the value of the fiber critical length. Further analysis shows that the critical length of the fiber is not sufficient for good strength of the composite. The fiber length should be larger than the fiber critical length. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, please do write them down below in the comment section.